All right. I think we're on. How's the audio? Can people can people hear? Okay, I've got no fewer than three dogs in the room, so <laughs> we're going to have some noises. It's not me, it's the dogs. Let me get some stats up real quick. All right. Yeah, okay. Looks like everything's going. Uh, thank you for stopping by Friday night. I'm sure everybody has far more interesting stuff to, to be doing, but we're going to give this a shot anyway. I think we've got plenty of stuff to talk about. The gold price kind of cratered. I think silver did too. And we've got a couple questions that came in on the community post, a few that came in in Discord. And uh, on that note, Nate, thank you, by the way, for, for joining up. We've got memberships coming up. There's a lot we want to do with it. I think we're starting out. You've got some community in the chat, and you've got some things you can do in Discord. There's a channel specific to members. It's not a hard pitch or anything like that. It's just out there now, trying to do more with it. So, Nate, uh, let me know if that Discord link doesn't work. But once you get in there, we have to adjust your permissions. And I am going to be looking at about five windows right now. So I might not get that one right away, but hopefully soon. There's some some mods in there too that that can take care of it if I'm uh, if I'm not on it quickly. So yeah, the lighting. <laughs> what I'm what I'm finding with this is I can either get something really sharp, really clear, and have a really shallow depth of field, so you can see like one thing but nothing else, or I can get everything on there and it's kind of clear, close enough. That's kind of where we fill. So. Uh, let me know if anything gets gets funky, but we should be good. Uh, I wish I had a account in front of me. I'm still kind of figuring this out. I don't know stats wise how many people are in here, but I see some a lot of people I know popping into the chat. I mentioned this in Discord. I'm gonna try not to do too much of just saying hi as everybody walks in on uh, walks into chat because. It's just takes me off my my game. I can't keep a can't keep a topic going. And it's just they scroll through so fast. So just know that uh, I appreciate everybody coming in. And uh, sorry if I'm not catching you all, but Dario, thanks for the the super chat. Appreciate it. And I see I see Sabat. I see a, a few people, Chris. Uh, yeah, okay. Discord's flashing at me too, but bags, what we, is that 117? Is that how many are in here? I'm going to close some of these windows so I can get a look. I've got some some charts in front of me. I think that's probably the most interesting thing to start with. I was going to do a video quickly and I had to like snap the rubber band on my wrist because it's just a today we dropped like $55. Realistically, you know that it's just not a big deal. The moving average right now is 1857. Where did we end today? Like 1865, somewhere in there. I had the chart in one of these windows, but that drop, $55 down, we're still above moving average. It's just one of those things where it's going to happen, and uh, it's really not a big deal. So I didn't even want to make a video about it, but uh, Jeffrey. Good to see you. I, I just said I'm not going to say uh, hi to everybody. You're one of the people who told me that I shouldn't do that, <laughs> but I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, where did we end? I, there's my chart. So two questions came up on the charts. One was, you know, what was going on with the price? And it, was, it was pretty obvious. Today we hit the new information on non-farm payroll and the numbers are like something crazy, like 517,000 new jobs. And the expectation was like 187,000. So it's almost like too good to be true kinds of numbers, like so crazy that people didn't even know what to do. So traders are looking at that. They know that the Fed is going to see 
that is an indicator that the economy is going to go well and they can continue to increase the rates. So everybody's getting skittish. Rates are going to go up. Dollars going to go up. Bonds are going to go up. Gold's going to go down. So I think people are probably just taking some profits. Again, not a not a big deal. You kind of have to weigh that out and look at it like, you know, worst case scenario would be gold is crashing and the economy is crashing. So the fact that not everything's going up in flames, maybe it's not that big of a deal. The jobs numbers, just not that interesting. But we were talking about that on Discord, too. And one of the things that we notice is that Fridays, the prices of gold have been going up. So like you get ready to buy for the week. You think, oh, I'll just grab something on Saturday. And sure enough, every Friday, the, the spot price pops and you go through the weekend and you've got to spend more on your gold. This Friday, I think it was pretty clear because we had that jobs payroll coming out or that payroll numbers coming out that who knows? I mean, definitely, I don't think anybody was expecting 517,000 rather than 187,000. So pretty, pretty crazy. And to think that that only moved spot price, $55, you know, there would have been a lot of people jumping out. So all things considered, not that big of a deal. Um, I'm going to try to spin through the chat a little bit as we go and not a little bit, a lot. You can hear me doing my stuttering already, but I'd like to get some questions in there. I think we'll hit that gold price kind of through it. Again, we have a few that came in for some questions on that community post. And some are some are pretty straightforward, like get some, some dimes, nickels, quarters out to compare some sizes. And others get into like, you know, what's the, the gold to silver ratio that you start to trade at, things like that. So Maybe we go in in reverse order, but another one that's popped up like five times is this idea of SLV or PSLV. So I'm going to talk about that just a little bit because I have like three videos on that topic over the last month. And it's not normally something that I really like to talk about a whole lot because it's uh, always gets the same responses. The minute you say that you are into any kind of derivative, whether it's gold or silver or anything, you get people telling you, you know, if you don't hold it, you don't own it. But with ETFs in silver, with miners in silver, you're pushing some buttons to get in, you're pushing some buttons to get out. So if you really do look at silver as something that could take off, I think it's kind of a good idea to have some in derivative form. Get out with your profits, stuff you don't care about because you're not holding on to it. You're not attached to it. You know, if it does hit the moon, then great. You just push a couple buttons and you get some profits out. PSLV versus SLV. People don't like SLV because it's not uh, it's not actually backed one-to-one -one ratio with silver. PSLV is prime. I don't know if it's one-to-one, -one, but it is backed by silver. So everyone says you need PSLV. Well, I don't know that it really matters because nobody is is getting delivery on their silver out of an ETF. I mean, the only way that you can request it is through these good delivery bars. And in the case of PSLV, you have to have $4,000 worth of, or excuse me, what am I saying? 4,000 ounces of silver to get delivery. Nobody's doing that. It's just, so to me, the difference between SLV and PSLV, definitely no big deal. Uh, Nick, thank you for the super chat. Another one just popped up, Andy. Andy says he's an ounce away from filling a 20 coin tube. Five eagles, five maples, seven buffaloes, two Britannias. What should I get to complete the tube? I mean, I'm going to assume you're in the U.S. because who would buy eagles if you're not in the U.S.? You've got, you've got 14, 24 carat. I mean, I, I'll give the boring answer. I just, I just get another eagle. I mean, you're gonna do the best with the, with the eagles, but uh, any of those are fantastic options. What are you saying, Zeph? I'll do four thousand ounces, but comment. Yeah. Uh, still, though, I mean, I, they're totally different things. I see this as like it's not an either or situation. The question is, it's like. Why not do both? 
So and rather than either or. So get your physical silver as much as you can fit in your house and then get some derivatives. The derivatives aren't going to, you're not going to have to get your wheelbarrow out, take them to a local coin shop, you know, haggle with somebody. And then it's just easier. Um, okay. So we had a few others. I'm just going to get some sizes out first. This is something that's been funny to me. <laughs> we, I started putting out like little things like cards or whatever, books, pens, knives, pocket knives, not the, not the scary kind, because you, nobody knows how what size these coins are. I mean, you think about it, you get a one-tenth ounce coin and it's smaller than a dime. So people know what a, what a, a dime feels like. The reason it's funny to me is when I, the first time I grabbed out a dime and a nickel, I swear I haven't seen a dime or a nickel in like 20 years because I grabbed them out and they seemed, they seemed really small. So probably it was even longer than that. I was probably like 12 the last time I had any nickels or dimes on me. Not a big fan of carrying around pocket change. But so the uh, comparison has some quarters here. I'm going to get rid of that one before I ding it like uh, Campbell did. Don't worry. These are, these are eagles. I can, I can bang them around. Uh, okay. So quarter ounce versus a nickel. I mean, that's what you're getting. Can we see those? I think we can see those. So that's your comparison. So you think about that. That's what a six hundred dollar coin, five hundred and eighty to six hundred and ten dollar coin versus a nickel. I mean, people ask about uh, getting those through customs, getting to another country with them for whatever reason. Go into Monte Carlo and you're going to blow a lot of money and you don't want to, or make a lot of money and you don't want to declare it. Pocket full of these things is it's pretty easy. Uh, again, quarter ounce size of a nickel. One ounce is bigger, but it's two thousand dollars for one of those coins is it's pretty wild. Um, yeah, I'm trying to catch Jeff. So, hopefully, the video is better. Where's Sabat at? Is the video better? I mean, he came on last time and he was he was complaining. I think I ruined his weekend. I think the video looks decent. I'm seeing like a reversed view, small window of it. Hope it hope it's okay. <laughs> I have this lighting rig now that I put in here that you might even be able to hear it humming. And when I turned it on, I swear like the whole grid powered down. It was like a brownout, like like the Griswolds when Clark turned on his his house. Okay, Jeff says the video's doing pretty well. Good. Uh Sabat, so those those uh eagles, they can't be destroyed. They're too strong. The coins aren't clear. Yeah, you know, living the dream. What I was trying to do earlier is get like super focused on them. And I'm just going to show you this. Like things are going to things are going to go dark here, but I'll get you the idea. I can get one thing sharp. And that's it. Or I can get everything on screen and they're there. You know, you see them okay. Had to pick. I picked, you know, let's, let's get a bunch of stuff on the on the screen. So you won't be able to see the dates. You won't be able to see the dings either, but you get the idea. Okay, so a couple of these questions that, that came up, uh, one in particular that stood out because I've been, I've, I've mentioned a couple times the, the semi-numismatic stuff, numismatic, numismatic. Uh, to me, it's kind of out of my league. I'm so I call it semi numismatic, but some of this stuff is has gone pretty wild. These high relief Perth mint coins, the one ounce coins, the let me get this screen out of the way. The we've got the 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 rabbit, the tiger, and the rooster. So 
they don't all go this way. That rooster, that's my favorite coin, no question. That's the one that I would never in a million years sell. The uh, tiger right beside it is one that's taken off in price. And if I wanted to try to get the ox or the mouse in that particular coin, I just looked because somebody asked, and there's an ox for sale right now for uh, $10,000 on eBay. I don't know if they'll get it. They might. But it was, a, let's see, when the ox was out, spot was a little bit different. It would have been about a $2,300 coin. And in a year and a half, it went from 2300 to one listing on eBay for $10,000. So you get somebody who has to have that coin to complete a, you know, to, to complete a collection. And it's, you can really ask whatever you want. So those coins, like I'm not a, I'm not a big player in the numismatic area, but I bought them all, you know, I just bought that, that rabbit, uh, $2,300. And right now it's probably worth $2,300. But in a year from now, I mean, it might be worth six, seven, 10, who knows? So they're almost like, I almost bought two or three of them just to hold them back, but I didn't do it. Again, I probably should have. So I have watched just to see if I could go back and get an ox, go back and get a mouse. And they're difficult. Somebody in the chat is looking for a mouse. He's got all the rest and I think he looks pretty hard and, and they just, they just don't pop up. Okay. So Chris says the light is good. Good. Sabat, I didn't see if you actually were uh, okay with the, the lighting tonight or not. I hope it's, hope it's good enough. Uh, some of the questions in that community area. Thank you, 365. I will have that drink on you. I, I have a vacation coming up in the next few weeks, and I'm just going to drop some videos on while I'm out. And uh, anyone who super chats while I'm out, I'm going uh, to buy random strangers drinks. So what's your number to back up the truck? There's similar questions like that, like, am I waiting? I mentioned this in Discord as well. Uh, I made a purchase today. I actually made two because one, one didn't go through. I think the first one, I had an eagle that I found for 1967, I think, somewhere in there. And then the, uh, the e-check failed. So I got him on the phone. And I ordered it again, and it was like five dollars cheaper than that, or something. So it was something like nineteen sixty-three. Now I could have gone to Jam Bullion and got that maple leaf, which would have been the smart way to go. But I don't know. I've got a, I've got a tube of eagles I want to finish off. So nineteen sixty-three. Really, a couple people have have asked about you know what's what's the point that I'll buy, and on the high side. I haven't bought anything over $2,000 in a long time, unless again, it's something like that rabbit that's on the screen. Otherwise it's been, you know, high 1900s, but not over that 2000. If I can get a coin for $2,000 right now, I'm happy. And I'm, you know, I'm pretty picky about the coins I'm buying. I'm buying those buffaloes and eagles and they're expensive coins right now. So as far as like, what's the back up the truck number, Moving average is 1850 something. I think it's 1857. Anything below that to me is a deal. Uh, anything below that probably gets me making sure that I'm buying as much as I would normally buy on a monthly basis. But it has to drop. So everyone kind of got fired up about the drop today. It was a two and a half percent drop, $53, something like that. If it goes down 10%, so it drops. $190. Uh, that's to me when I would start to look to buy more. And if it drops 15%, so I can't even do the math, 275 or whatever that is, that to me would be back up the truck. So you're talking about a 16, low 1600s. To me, that would be, uh, I would uh, I would buy a lot more. So uh, kind of keep accounts separate 
for my buying and I'll buy until that account starts to look like it's drained and then I won't, I won't buy more. I have that, I have more cash in that account right now than I have in the last five years. So I haven't been buying the last few months and that's, that's the reason why. So today I bought, I only bought one coin. I didn't go crazy. I don't think today's, you know, what happened today is crazy. I saw a bunch of videos out. I haven't had a chance to watch them, but I assume everybody's saying the same thing. It's non-farm payroll, you know, 517,000 new jobs when they were expecting 187. I have trouble getting real excited about that. I mean, we're, we're so much we're so much higher than where I expected it to be at the beginning of the year. I thought the beginning of 2023 was going to be pretty pretty low level and then the end of the year is when the the numbers were going to spike. So hitting 1900 and up was a was a pretty big surprise to me. I saw that central bank buying Looks like Don bought the dip today. I mean, it was definitely enough to get me to buy when I wasn't planning on buying gold, at least. Sabat wants to see the Bronco. <laughs> Belgians love Broncos. Oh, I don't have it here. That's not the... I have to get it later for you, Sabat. Uh, Walter Afonso, hello from Montreal. I have my first maple leaf. So Canadians have it so great. I think the Canadian maple leaf is the best coin there is. And if you're a Canadian, I, I feel like nobody appreciates that. Canadians don't appreciate it. Only people outside your country do. Uh, Josh, what are you saying about the mouse? How I have to be missing a lot in the in the chat. Tell you what, when I see the colored names, I stop. But I still haven't figured this out. I was just on the phone with Stormy right before I was on this call, and I don't know how he does it, keeping up with chat. I've just had a heck of a time. Again, I'm, I'm trying not to say hi to everybody, but I see Randy and. Polly and a lot of you I know roll in and just generally hello. Silver Forever, you stop making, okay. Yeah, you stop making videos. Is the, is the audio choppy for anyone other than Silver Forever? Zero audio. Slow mode. I'm looking in the window and it says the chat is doing okay. Is it uh, is it dropping in and out for others? Hmm. Well, it's been it's been something that's been happening. I think last time we were out, I never did see anything wrong with the health of the, of the stream. So maybe it's the crazy ice storms in Dallas. Maybe you're all our Texans having trouble. Yeah, your problem, not mine. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, what else do we want to cover? I, I think we're going to come back to that that price in a minute. But um, a few things that came up, you know, I'm going to get some of this stuff off. A lot of people have been asking about selling. Jeez, a lot of people have been asking about selling gold. And I totally get why someone who's not super interested in this stuff might sell it you're going to catch up with, you know, you get a little bit of a, a bump in price. I mean, if it's, if it's worth it to you to get out of, go for it. For me, I have absolutely no reason to sell. So there's not a number that I would sell at. There are events that I would sell at. So it's like, uh, if I need to come up with a down payment and I don't want to go crazy and zero out savings or anything like that, then it's, I'm going to sell some gold. Other than that, I just don't have a real reason to do it. So number to me, I had a video a while back because two people had talked about doubling the price of gold. One was the Zoltan. Uh, I can't even come up with his last name right now. I'm going to say it. Anyway, 
an analyst for Credit Suisse was saying that if Russia or, well, I think it was specifically Russia set the price of oil to a gram of gold, what they could do at that point is just say, well, we're going to sell you two barrels of oil for the same amount of gold because they could do it at that point, get it back down to about the, the price that it was previously at and that would double the price of gold. So, I mean, whatever, $3,600 at the time. So thank you, Zoltan Pozar. If gold went to $3,600, I mean, I would sell half my gold because I, I'd take out, you know, about, at that point, it's house money. All of my gold would be effectively free, or at least the initial investment would be out of it. So, I mean, I would do that, and then I'd immediately start buying it again. 10 years out, I'd be really happy I did. Jeff, thank you, sir. The random stranger drink fund. <laughs> yep. I'm not going to say where I'm going, but uh, it's a place where you tip and you make a lifelong friend. First time pulling YouTube on a big screen makes a grim. So yeah, the Grimms modes, a couple questions came in about the pocket knives. A couple questions came in about the cards. I'm going to get the, uh, I'll get the cards out in a second. These knives, pocket knives, the, just saying it can piss off YouTube. So <laughs> I set up door marked private. I saw that flip through the chat a little while earlier. I had high hopes for, setting up that second channel to really talk about whatever I wanted, kinds of things that would potentially get me kicked off the partner platform on the main channel. And then I got hit by a bus. I talked about that last time. I feel like my, you know, essentially broke my back in two places and knocked me out. So it just, I had no time. I had no uh, motivation to be putting in that second channel work, but it's going to come back. Because they're just things that you can't really talk about on, the, <laughs> yes, um, uh, the hippocampus. Uh, the things you can't talk about on the normal channel. You just don't know what YouTube's going to do. And you put in so much work to these channels. If you get deplatformed, you not only lose the ad revenue, you lose. Uh, you can't even. You can't even talk to support. So anyway, this this knife. Uh, maybe M can explain why they call it a hippocampus. It's a it's a strange blade shape, but a fantastic pocket knife. Uh, Josh, so I didn't I didn't literally get hit by a bus. I don't like to say I got sick because I, I didn't really get sick. I got injured. There, I know I see a couple doctors in the <laughs> in the chat that could explain this better than I could, but I got. Uh, severely injured. I was in the hospital for a little over a week and I was, I was really out of it for about three months. So I'm getting, getting like, I'm off the pain meds now and uh, pretty much back to it, but I still kind of move like, I don't know, I move like an old man. I don't like that. It'll, I'll get back though, full steam. So it could be been a lot worse. What I had, I was told, well, I don't know why I'm going into this. Some people don't come out of it. So anyway, uh, I think I saw Yankee pop in. So yeah, thanks, Yankee. Uh, I stopped, I don't know, at some point yesterday, I think I flipped into, I'm going to say that Yankee was live streaming yesterday and he totally probably wasn't. That's how my memory works. But I think at one point I saw something like 1,200 users in there and maybe there were more than that. So I, I'm kind of saying that I'm having trouble keeping up with chat and I'm amazed how Stormy does it. Well, Yankee, I think, is doing it like taking a sip from the fire hose straight from the hydrant. Uh, thank you, Neil. It, yeah, the bus, bus came out worse than me. That's part of why I normally I travel a lot, but I haven't been. So this vacation is going to be nice. I'm just going to go float in an ocean and have uh, 
I don't know, waiters who don't speak the language, go get me rum drinks. Okay, a couple other things had come up. So the uh, question that hit like five times was, at what point are you done buying? And I think what it, the intention there was like, is there a number where it just gets too expensive and you sit it out? And I think that that's a little bit like, when would you sell? I don't I have any reason to sell. It'd be an event. Uh, not buying would probably be more like an event. What I would do would actually be, I would just go down in size. And, and I'll say that in a video, like, you know, there's nothing wrong with getting a quarter ounce of gold. I mean, you do that on a monthly basis to kind of, you know, you get your hit. Still excited. It's a significant purchase. People will complain about the premiums. And, and yeah, that coin right there, that quarter ounce American Gold Eagle, 16% premium and up. And if you get them from somewhere like JM or Appmex, you know, it's going to be a lot more. The really big dealers, the ones that I, the ones that I like, the most, I'll come back to that, uh, are very expensive with fractional. So I would I would just buy smaller. So that number to me, it's it's like if we hit all time highs, 2050, 20, 2050 dollars, I will slow down, but I won't stop. If we hit three thousand dollars, I would probably slow it down a little bit. Uh, and and that meaning like I probably wouldn't even buy once a month. And the reason for that is I hit a, I mean, I hit a goal. I'm fine. I'm if, if I get sick, hit by a bus and can't earn, I could, you know, I could sell some gold. I'll be just fine. So if, if it was, if, if I wasn't in that situation, if I felt like I was behind, if I felt like I needed more gold, uh, it would be a little bit different. It would kind of be like the price is what the price is. You just buy. But because I'd hit a goal that I was hoping to get to last year, I could slow it down. Wouldn't uh, wouldn't be that bad. Did I see Britches pop into chat? I th thought I did. Yeah. Britches had a video out today. I think you're clean. What do we call you here? Do we call you clean? I just have to be careful on real names. Uh, I assume your video was on the price drop. I was I was scrambling this afternoon and I didn't see it. I know Sal had it. Sal probably had three videos this afternoon about the price drop. But I think uh, I think Bridges had one. On. Yep, Clean Money says it was uh, non farm payroll pushing it. Is that your your take? Economy's doing too well. Five hundred seventeen thousand new jobs compared to the expected one hundred eighty seven thousand. We'll just say that. That's an assume. Yep. Yeah. Clean concurs. Uh, fixed blades. Yeah. I mean, I, I have, uh, I, I mentioned this at one point. I started doing martial arts when I was seven. And I do, uh, I've, I've done, I've done bladed training since I was maybe 11. So I've got everything from karambits to swords. So lots of those uh, that I don't put on screen because, you know, even this is Sabat still here. If Sabat, if you're here, let everybody know what you think of that pocket knife there. I mean, there there are cities that I, I work in that you can't have a two inch blade. So, you know, even showing a pocket knife <laughs> just gives people bad feelings. And uh, on top of that, it, it gives you two bad feelings. So I don't put fixed blades on. I don't put uh, switch blades out the front blades. I don't put karambits. I don't, you know, I keep all those off just like I would keep, you know, guns off. Uh, Yankee cannon goal today. That must be the, the, uh, these guys. Good for you. That's a it's kind of a big deal, Vinny. Yeah. So the as it turns out, I had I knew exactly what I was going to be buying this weekend, and then and then spot price dropped. So I had to I had to switch gears. You know, luckily my my bride is gone, so I can do whatever I want. <laughs> She's not like, hey, what were you doing? Uh, 
at the gun shop today. All right, some RDX and a debt. Yeah, uh, it's it's funny how perspective changes. Like to me, you know, pocket knives are just. I mean, pens out here. I don't even have the screen up. I should probably look at the screen to make sure I can see things. But I mean, they're a tool, the same as a pen to me. So, but you know, I get how other people are, you know, a little bit turned off by them. So I try not to talk about it. I try not to show them too much. The thing with the pocket knives, though, is I get a lot of people in who will be like, why do you need a knife? Well, I need a knife because I, I like a knife. And I'm not going to do a channel about stuff that I don't like. I'm not going to do a channel that feels like it's getting boring. You know, if I don't want to talk about certain things, I don't. And if I do want to show certain things, I will. Otherwise, the whole thing isn't really worth doing. So anyway, pocket knives. That Grimsmo is one of my favorites. Uh and I don't go crazy. I mean, you you follow some knife channels for uh, for a couple weeks, and you'll see crazy. Like, I want to say Fab Blades. He's he says Fab, but the YouTube channel is Fab Blades, and he'll he'll drop like so. This is a Rockstead, and uh, you just say it's like eleven hundred dollars or something. This guy will drop seven blades out for comparison and they'll all be like four or five thousand dollar <laughs> blades so in the first 30 seconds he'll have dropped like 20 grand in in pocket knives on the camera and just move them out so i, I mean th these are crazy that you can't justify them to my wife uh but uh i'm it's almost like they're like scratching the surface is that a dad joke scratching the with the never mind uh otfs though uh yank i've seen you have a i think you have an ultra tech or some kind of micro tech that i've seen before i have lots of those again i, I keep them off uh because they look kind of scary if i throw a truid on out you know it's gonna freak out some people so that's not my intent uh looks like don recognize knows what the Rocksteads are I'm afraid to like set it down because it will cut right through the leather. They're like that. Uh, what's the show? The bodyguard where Kevin Costner drops Whitney Houston scarf on the katana and it just slices through. <laughs> it's totally what these are. Anyway, no one wants to hear about the knives. Well, some of you want to hear about the knives. See if I can do this without cutting myself. All right. Bugsy, what are we talking about? The folders? Yeah. Uh, okay. So, yeah, Bugsy knows. Bugsy's, well, clearly you can see he's he's now a wrench here too, but he's one of the mods on the Discord channel. Uh, the comments that'll come in sometime, you'll get, say you get a 1,000 comments on a video, and 995 of them will be, just great comments. Not everyone agrees with you, but they're, they're all grownups. Everyone's good. And then you'll get these like three comments from just like total bastards, you know, just trying to push buttons. Uh, and then you'll get two of them from people who you, you just can't really see their perspective. And some of those, we'll call them those two will come in and, and be like, you know, I, I'm not watching anymore because you've got a pocket knife in your, in your video. So some people hate them. Some people like them. I need them to open my capsules. Just ask Bugsy. I mean, that's actually why they came on. I had, uh, I care, I have some Sabenzas and, uh, you know, I open my capsules with them and I, I just have kind of a, you know, like the basic titanium Sabenza that I've always carried. And I, it was on screen one day and somebody instantly was like, I got a Sabenza. So I started putting them in because uh, I feel like there's a lot of crossover. People who like, some of the EDC stuff and the knives fall into that category. Also like gold. All right. Yankee, the bigger you get, the more obnoxious trolls get, you know what? Well, first of all, Yankee, your <laughs> channel is on fire, man. Uh, you, I feel like you probably get a little more political, but I also feel like you have bigger fans not more necessary i mean that's not where i'm going you clearly have more 
Uh, but like people want, a lot of your audience wants to hear that. I just don't get into some of the things that, you know, you're going to catch people on the right versus people on the left about uh, typically. So I could see how you get some crazies, but I always feel like whenever I look at your comments, you've got a lot of, a lot of good support. Now mine I'll talk about Bitcoin once in a while. So then I'll get someone coming in from a Bitcoin perspective and they will be total bastards about gold, you know, sometimes vice versa. Cannot make them all happy. I constantly have to remind myself not to, not to try. And Steven points out that Yankee has Tim and you can do this thing Yankee where you don't have to say anything. You can let Tim do it. There's like, smirk and his like real straight shooter vibe <laughs> that way you get like i didn't say it tim said it and you know the audience goes crazy because they love that they eat that stuff up i need to kidnap tim keep him in the dungeon so i can like steal his popularity feed feed my kids for years man uh yeah it's so, so bad is is letting it out i've i think i've already Mention my strategy in Discord. That would be like the heist of the century, stealing Tim. Who do we have in here that's making videos? By the way, I, I mentioned this earlier. I feel like Silver Forever. Correct me if I'm wrong. You kind of you kind of stopped putting out the videos. Did you did he come back yet? I think you were selling to buy a house or something fancy like that. Uh, Clean money, fantastic channel. I haven't seen your video yet today. I will. Uh, Clean is one of the first people who I feel, I don't even know if you emailed Clean, Britches, whatever we're calling you, or if it's just through through the comments section, but Clean was like one of the first people to join when I dropped membership. Uh, fantastic guy. If you don't know him, which I'm sure everybody knows him. Um. Let me flip back. Vinny, I mean, yeah, uh, make the videos. Just for a second, kind of give a little bit of information on, on how it goes. I mean, because you, you feel you feel super funny doing videos. I mean, it, it's tough to be a grown adult and make videos for YouTube about gold, about a lot of things probably. And the minute that you get your video online and you watch that thing i mean th that'll make you feel like a tool because your your voice sounds funny your your hands look funny you say something stupid it, i mean the whole thing is it's it's a weird feeling but i kicked off a channel in 2020 in february early february is like february 9th and then I posted my first video February 22nd. So the, you know, you start with nothing, you get, you get no views and being an adult, you know, you don't want to go spam everybody. Hey, check out my channel. No one's going to pay attention to that anyway. So you kind of slowly go through this like real slow lurch. And then, you know, eventually, if you're lucky, you get a video that catches on and it starts to get a little easier. Uh, three years in, on probably in a week, I'll hit 10 million views and I'll have 55,000 or so uh, subs. And uh, it gets to a point where you, you can get ad revenue from it. So it's worth your time. But the more that you do, you start chasing those stats and then pretty soon you're putting a lot of time into it. So you, you need to go in like knowing what you're after. Almost like, you know, we're talking about like what point to stop buying gold. You kind of need to know like how hard are you going to go after the whole YouTube thing? Because right, there's a point where it's, it's not worth your time. Uh, everything's like that. You know, I have, I have a primary job. I have three other things I do. And I do this YouTube thing. I, I don't have a whole lot of time. I just have a, a family that's cool. that doesn't need a lot of my help. And they, you know, they're open to me doing this. So it's, it can be tough, but uh, 
you know, it's it's nice. You get you get a couple of things. For, you get some ad revenues. You get to you know throw it at some gold. You get to know some fantastic people. And I kicked off the Discord channel. Discord, by the way, anyone who wants in there, totally free. There's no pitch. There's nothing. There's nothing that's going to cost you. Uh, I do have memberships. Memberships are going to get you access to one more channel. And in that channel, we're going to do some fun stuff. But it's not, you know, there are almost a thousand people in Discord. I don't know if Bugsy, if you have any idea, I could be way off. 800. There's a lot. And uh, that whole thing, well, that whole thing takes a lot of <laughs> a lot of time too. But so the people that you meet though, and like a lot of people have tended to get into Discord and kind of hang out there. And it's just amazing some of the people that that are in there. You know, Bugsy, who you see the wrench with here, is fantastic, but uh, I think he would agree. There are people in there. Uh, I won't. I won't fully out them, but uh, Chris is in here. Jeff is in here. I don't know if Bill floated in. Bill's got family stuff going in. That you're just like, are these? You wonder if they're real people because they're just so damn cool. And I swear we've got at least at least three international spies in there. Maybe four with Sabat. Anyway, post a Discord link. Uh, I'm going to just see what happens to be in my clipboard. Hopefully that one works. Uh, yeah, di Discord kind of runs itself. What I, the reason that I started that up is I'll make a video and we're talking about uh, gold to silver ratio. So now that's what the topic is. Discord, though, you talk about whatever you want. There's channels in there. You talk about silver. You talk about gold. You can talk about other things. And, you know, we try to keep it on the rails because some crazy stuff does actually uh, come up in there that shouldn't, but it's it's a fantastic place. Pretty much self self polices. If you haven't checked it out, check it out. Nick knows. Nick's in there. Nick, I feel like you were one of the first people in there. Maybe I'm wrong. Eight hundred and seventy five members. Yeah, I mean, so I don't know. Does that sound like a lot? It's 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 a lot. 87 people having deep philosophical discussions right now. And too many guys. It's like He-Man Woman Hater in there, which is not what it was intended to be. <laughs> but it's it's fun. It's it's a little like the fraternity because you all you've got the weirdos, you've got the exceptionally interesting people, and then you've got the normies like me. It's it's fun. Uh, yeah, Nick, I know you were early on. I don't know how early clean was in. There. I feel like you kind of took it off, man. Like clean, like ghosted us. The, uh, so clean britches, whatever saying, I have to bring the field notes back. I actually pulled down a video <laughs> because I had, uh, I can't even believe that I had this, but I was flipping through to show an illustration, I think, that I had done. And like, sure enough, gave my like, ledgers, <laughs> which two of you will know what I'm talking about. You're basically giving the recovery code for your cryptocurrency. And I, I just thought, all right, I'm a dipshit. I need to get that kind of stuff off there. So rather than keep a notebook on there, I, I, better, I better pull them out. Yeah, clean is saying too many distractions. And that's when you're running a channel. You've got the videos, you're constantly coming up with a new video. You've got the comments, you're trying to keep up with that. And then to throw Discord on top of it, it's it definitely, it's a lot. I mean, to do this too, you kind of have to have a presence on, on Instagram. I don't know why, but feels like you do. So, I mean, that that's, it's a lot. It's definitely a lot. I couldn't do, couldn't have done it in my 20s. I spent too much time playing. You know, in my 40s, I could do it. Don't worry, Tyler, or it's not Tyler Durden, it's Tyler Turden. Uh, they are well secured now. I have uh, I had a I had several ledgers. One in particular, I was getting set up for my son. That's the one that I put out. So anyway, I'm not always stupid. I just 
you sometimes am. Uh, price. Let me cover price again. The price of gold right now above 1850 is higher than it should be. So it would be, I don't know, low 1800s if the world made sense. And we're in the, you know, just as of today, 1860s. So I think it will go down. I think that what we'll see is low 1800s, 1820-ish. And then things will, because it's just going to get quiet for a while. And then either we get these crazy central bank buying numbers that will push it up, or it just kind of levels off for a little while. And we start getting what is made to look like good economic news. And then gold will kind of go down and down. And then at some point, the Fed says, all right, uh, mission accomplished. We're not raising the rates anymore. Maybe even we're going to drop the rates a little bit, spur the economy. And what will happen will be like, okay, uh, your bond yields are going to go down. It's premature because the economy still sucks. And the moment that it happens, that's the pivot everybody talks about. The moment that happens, gold's going to shoot up because you no longer have the competing bond yields. You no longer have people having a sense of, okay, they, they're, they're doing what they need to do. And uh, you know, people are going to move their assets. So I think Q3, Q4, gold goes up. I think Q2, I wouldn't be surprised if gold goes down. Uh, all right, we've got two in here. Thank you, Joseph. Let's see. Clear value tax. Silver, okay. So, okay. Yankee, salivate, silver seeker, and clear value tax. This is this is an odd group. Should all do a podcast about gold, silver tax, docs. I don't know clear value tax. I'll, I'll look him up. Uh, probably every quarter. I have this, I've had this idea where you get people who who have slightly different ideas. You know, the, the funny thing here is, you know, even, even the people I disagree with or the people who disagree agree about more than they disagree with. I mentioned Campbell's coins last last live. He had a couple things about confiscation that I don't agree with, but uh, he's one of the most interesting people doing videos. So, uh, you know, I, I would probably find the same with some of these others. You know, Sal is, I think I probably have all the same views as Sal and, and Yankee. Uh, I don't because Yankee likes constitutional silver. I can't stand that stuff. <laughs> but you take someone like Speg, uh, who uh, I feel like, I think that would be a fun podcast because Speg's an antagonist. And uh, I don't I don't know if I if we agree or not, but like I said earlier, probably we probably agree with on 90 percent and don't on 10. That 10 percent might be what's what's fun about it. Clear value tax. Solid, bro. Yeah, I'll check him out. Oh, that's you clean. Who's saying that? I will check him out. I think we have pretty similar ideas. Clean money and me get the same. It'd be like Sal. You get the same idea. Sal, though, would be playing a guitar and given too much attention to freaking Kitco. Dramatic pause. Coin geek. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, so there are, there are channels that I really, really like that uh, don't pop up much. Classical numismatics is like a incredibly interesting channel. He, he talks about uh, ancient gold. And uh, I mean, even his Instagram is, is fun because he's pulling on, he's got like Aureuses and, you know, Denari and Tetradrachms. And I mean, the guy is he, like legitimate stuff. Like he'll have $40,000, 17 gram gold coins on the table cool stuff. Uh, Randall Miller, by the way, thank you for 
hitting that VIP. We're going to be doing more on that channel. Got memberships up. It's not a pitch. I just think it's cool. It's something I've been wanting to do for a while. Again, I, got, I, was, I was getting ready to do it. I got really sick. I didn't get sick. I got really damaged. And so I didn't, I didn't get it done. And then I thought the time that I had between Christmas and New Year's, I was going to do it for sure. And then again, didn't get it done. Uh, Stormy's been on my case. I see you. And he'd been saying, you know, just do it. And I mean, that guy's got his, his memberships are uh, something. He's, he's got a pretty, pretty good deal going there. So I finally did it, but without fanfare, because I don't feel like I've got a whole lot of content back there. I don't have all the things up yet. So anyone who's coming in now really appreciate it because you're coming in on, you know, because you're a nice person not because uh, the, the content that's going behind a, a member wall is, is going to like change your life at this point. This coin, by the way, that's Stormy's coin. I mean, who doesn't have their own silver coins minted, right? Ah, get this thing out. Can I touch silver? I forget. I don't know. You can see my bright red hands. It's a pretty cool, pretty cool coin for Stormy. I mean, it could have been. Could have been like a Cabbage Patch Kid or something. Anyway, uh, did I chase him off? Is he still here? Cabbage Patch, Garbage Pail, same guy. Uh, Bill, thank you. I'm surprised. So Bill popped in for a minute. I'm surprised. I don't know if he's still around. He might have headed out. He's He's got like huge family news. Congrats. That's all I'll say. I won't out you. One of the mods on Discord, also one of the international spies, and one of the people who you're not really sure if he really exists, because I I think that I overspend on certain things. You know, like it's not a cheap pocket watch right there. Well, Bill's got like four of them. Every time I pull something out, Bill's got four more. Now he's a little bit nicer. So he's he's like, pick a cool person, multiply it by two. That's Bill. Patty G, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Uh, Bill says I need more Krugers. So I've I've purchased three Krugerands, and two of them have been fake, Sabat. Uh, so I bought, <laughs> I should probably explain that. I bought some Krugs on eBay because the price was like, it, it, it was early days and and it was one of those like 2015 years where, you know, maybe it was legit because some people were just trying to get out of gold. It wasn't doing much. So the local coin shops weren't paying much for your gold. And, and so I saw these two Krugs, two different sellers, about the same price. One looked like it was cull and I ordered that. And then the other one came in and it looked pretty nice. So I ordered that. And then... The first one showed up and it was yellow. I pulled it out immediately. I was like, this is this is Fugazi, like total fake on site, obvious fake. And then the second one showed up and it was a little bit more legit looking, but I weighed it. It didn't even weigh out. Uh, both of them were tungsten. Both of them looked like they were trying to copy a maple leaf. And you can tell a fake primarily because they're uh, cast. So, or like, think about it, the, there, you pour into a cast and it's not going to be as sharp as something that struck. So you could see like the, uh, the antelope's horns weren't very clear. It just, it looked super fake. And eBay has fantastic buyer, uh, controls, but not good or insurance, not good seller insurance. So if you're selling, you take the risk of somebody saying, yeah, that's fake. You lose that money. If you're buying and you buy a fake like I did, that's no big deal because eBay just gives you money back. And that's what happened with my two. The third one that I have is uh, in uh, in a vault. So I've, I've said I could get it out of the vault, but why? I mean, uh, anyway. Krugs are great if you're into that kind of thing. 
Days of Pre-33. Was that Sabat who said that? No, that's Magpie. Magpie, good to see you. All right, what's what's Empire saying? I don't agree with anything Stormy's saying about coins. He's got these. What are they? The 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 uh, Queen's virtues. <laughs> Every coin that the man buys has either a boob or a penis on it, and I mean anyone who knows that coin series knows what I'm talking about because you got you got like classical sculpture and the woman's got like the half toga on for no reason you know holding the hand of some baby in the nude it's a weird series it's a super weird series that's not that's not my fault that's stormy's fault the bag subscribes to empire precious metals there you go stormy it was worth your time. <laughs> Stormy's taking time away from his wife and uh, Yellowstone. So thanks for coming out. Joseph Alvarez, thank you. What are we saying here? Yes, Campbell's Coins. Yep. Trying to rem remember his name. Looking to smart silver stacker. I've seen him before. <laughs> this is terrible to say, but... I don't get I, I don't I don't get drawn into many of the silver only channels because uh, I don't know. Let me read the rest of your comment first. And Copper Mutant, I definitely recommend looking into these different channels. They all got different perspectives. Totally get that. Like getting different perspectives. I got to a point where I had way too many channels. I had to cut back. Uh, when when you follow, say you follow, we'll just say twenty channels talking about silver in the majority of them are telling you silver is going to the moon. It starts to feel like there's no other perspective. And uh, about the time of the second silver squeeze, it started to feel like too much to me because everybody was, you know, he, pumping that up. And I was on the side saying, there's, there's no way this is going to happen. And people are going to spend all this money on premiums to get into this thing, you know, borrow money, and it's not gonna, it's not gonna take off. And you're gonna have a bunch of bag holders. I'm, I'm sorry, I know a lot of people are into silver. I'll get back to that in a minute because I'm not against it. But it felt to me like a really weird push. So I had to kind of cut back on them. So now I'm a little bit more careful about who I'm, who I'm adding. You get somebody like. Uh, you know, like like stormy or clean, talking about both. Well, then I know. Okay, you're you're interested in more things, and and I'm you know definitely like that perspective. But if somebody's in a silo and they only like one thing, which kind of looks like you know, I'm in a gold silo now that I say that, but uh, that kind of turns me off on the on the channel. I'm gonna mute myself for a second so I can cough. All right, Billy Graves. Yeah, thank you. Get uh, I get emails and I get I get Instagram notes and I'm not always great at replying to them. Unfortunately, uh, Discord's probably the easiest place to to do that. But uh, do I have a silver to gold ratio? I bet that came up twelve times today. So uh, no, but let me get a drink. I think Randy was asking if this was real, by the way. Yes, it is. And uh, so is the cal the Celsius I have right here with the caffeine. This is going to put me to sleep. Uh, gold to silver ratio. I played that game a couple times. Really what it was doing for me, I, I made a, a ratio trade in 2018. I made a ratio trade in 2020. And then uh, so two actual trades and then several times... When I wanted gold, okay, so 2020, I started to feel like gold had gotten really expensive. It was getting, it stung when I'd go to the coin shop. So I would take some silver with me 
and almost thought of that like I'm going to get a discount on this gold because you know I've already dropped the money. It's it's uh, sunk cash that I had into that silver, so it felt like I was getting a discount if I would take in twenty ounces of silver to put toward my gold. Anyway, so did that a lot. The silver to gold ratio that I hit, I, I honestly, I don't know what it was in 2018. In 2020, uh, I think I got out of it at about 68. But what my local shops do is they say, okay, so we're going to do this trade. They get out their notebook. One of them has a computer, only one. And they write down, this is what the silver is worth. This is what I'll give you. So that's uh, American Silver Eagle. I'm going to give you $30 and you've got 40 of them. So write that down. And then you want to trade that toward, okay, we'll, we'll just say I have 70 of them because I said 68. You want to put that toward an American Gold Eagle. Well, the American Gold Eagle is spot price 1900, but I'm getting 2090. So they write that down. They subtract it, and then you pay the premium twice. So you get kind of stung on the buyback, and then you pay for the premium, and you've already paid the premium on the silver going into it, even though it's sunk cost. It's not a good, it's not a good deal. So uh, I have trouble answering that. Like, what's your gold to silver ratio that you trade at? Well, I don't have a lot of silver right now, so I'm not trading it. It's not going to do me any good to trade out of it. You know, it might actually do something this year, so it'll be fun to watch it. I already mentioned I've got more in ETFs than I do in physical silver at the moment, but so I don't have a number. It, it's an event to me. Like I, if I really wanted some gold, I would trade out of it. But uh, as far as, you know, like logically what makes sense, well, if you can get in and buy low premium silver, if that's a thing, when the GSR is 81 to 1, hold that until it's 68 to 1, trade it then while you're just barely ahead of the premium. So it makes sense, kind of. Uh, the problem with that is, uh, the problem is the premium, but the bigger problem with that is people talk about this like uh, the GSR is historically high. And then historically, people will say, historically, the GSR is 15 to 1. Well, that's not true. Uh, unless you're playing Dungeons and Dragons, it's 10 to 1. If you're talking about ancient Rome, it's 15 to 1. Uh, 50 to 1 is crazy. People will use numbers from 2011 when gold shot up to $49.60. And they'll say, well, yeah, well, then it was whatever it was. It's going to go back to that. No, it's not. Uh, you, you have a very small chance of that happening. So I'm not going to say it won't happen, but it's not a strategy. It's a, you know, lottery ticket. It's a, you got lucky if it does and good for you if it does. But, uh, so I wouldn't buy more silver because the ratio makes you think that it's the cheaper metal. I don't compare them at all. If I want silver, I buy silver. If I want buy gold, I buy gold and, uh, grumpy one. Went to 125 to one. It it could go the other way completely. So, all right. So I feel like somebody wants to talk about that tetradrachm. That's Blanton's, by the way. Okay. Wait for it. Ah, uh, you see my, you can see my fingers. How about now? Okay. Boom. 17 grams of silver struck 250 AD-ish. All right, you can't see it with my hand. You can see my palm. Can you, this is the stupidest camera. There it is. This is an Athenian owl. If you go back to, I mean, we're like BC. We're, we're, we're talking about uh, Greece. Okay. It's not Roman. 
Someone said Roman. Uh, this is in Athens. They came up with a standard coin, 17 grams of silver. So it's a wealthy uh, nation isn't the right word, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go with it. Empire, whatever. Very wealthy empire. They had silver. They had extremely pure silver, and they minted this coin. That's Athena. So other nations started to copy them. It caught on. All of a sudden, you had international coinage, effectively. That's what that is. That owl is badass. Uh, it's super cool. Uh, Jeff is saying it looks stoned, but it's no... What's the Strix? Why can't I come up with the North Korean owl? That's stone, Jeff. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, I've always like, I've always thought of this coin when I've thought of ancient coins, and so I bought this. <laughs> All right, so I I went crazy with this coin. It's a, it was seventeen hundred dollars. Stupid. Maybe it was sixteen hundred. We'll say sixteen hundred. So I don't feel quite as bad. Uh, if you can read that, it's a, it's an MS grade, which you rarely find. If that's like the fraction of the fraction. And then it's a 5-4. So if you get a 5-4, even a 4-4, 5-5, it's going to be an expensive coin, super expensive coin. The, the deal is I wanted the coin. I didn't want to buy a coin on an auction, get it on camera and have somebody point out, Hey dummy, you bought a fake. So I paid more. It was dumb, but, uh, I was super excited when it came in. I'm not a fan of slabs. I took care of that. Lots of complaints that I broke it out of a slab and instantly lost a couple hundred dollars. If I buy a coin like that, I don't care about it. a couple hundred dollars. I don't care how that sounds either because th this is something I don't buy often. I mean, I already said I'm in my 40s. This is the first one I bought. I mean, I was like, I think I can handle paying more just to know that it's real because 10 years from now, I don't want that question. Like, is it? And, and it's it's graded. That doesn't mean that anybody has a, you know, 100% way of saying that, yeah, it's real. But uh, this one is I actually had two experts look at it and they not only concur that it's real, but that it's uh, it's, a, it's, it's fantastic specimen. There's no way you could create a mold and pour this. You can actually see like what's going on with this sucker. You can't fake that hard to show on camera. Anyway, I wanted the coin, waited to buy it, had to feel really special. <laughs> uh before i actually did it but uh i like that next one up is an aureus i want to get a some roman gold all right uh who's leaving is it bill or stormy yeah stormy good to see you pal uh yeah jeff it's in person it's it was, so first of all what's crazy is do I have any other silver around here other than Stormy's coin? Uh, I look at a American silver eagle wrong, and it like develops milk spots. I keep it out on the desk. It tones. You know, I touch it with my greasy hands, and you know, it, it never recovers. That owl, that's probably been buried in the ground for a thousand years. You know, who knows what they did with it? And it still looks cleaner than my American Silver Eagles. This is pretty crazy. It's also incredibly pure silver. So some of the, like when you're dealing with some of the ancient coins, the gold coins, they're actually electrum because they started out pretty pure gold and then uh, emperors would add other metals in over time. And so to get to the point where when the earliest coins were electrum, there was just, they were found that way, silver and gold alloy <laughs> uh over time though they've been you know diluted I'm sure there's a better word for 
that in metallurgy terms, but this coin is super, super pure. Anyway, okay. Yeah, I know picking on the US Mint, they don't deserve to be picked on. The, the silver thing is funny. So I primarily talked about gold and I get beat up for not we wearing gloves, which is the funniest thing to me. You can take these coins out on your boat, get into a horrible accident, lose them in, you know, murky, muddy, gross pond water that thousands of people pee in for hundreds of years. Pull that coin out. It'll be like the day you bought it. Silver is different. So me holding these coins, I'm not going to damage them. Maybe uh, maybe one day we'll find out I'm wrong. We'll get them out of the capsules year, years from now and they'll all be green. Anxious stacker. So I think I said this earlier in the stream. There was absolutely no way to have guessed that the non-farm payroll was going to come in so incredibly high that everyone's going to freak out and sell. So incredibly high that everyone thinks that we're going to see another. Uh, it's actually going to affect the next rate hike. You just can't plan against that. So say, I don't know what a huge order is. Say it's $2,000 and there was what, $1.50 change on on silver, I mean, I, I don't know what the percentage ended up, but you're probably talking about a 2% change. I mean, you lost $40 uh, a night out. You could easily lose more. So, I mean, it could be worse. Gold and silver are doing pretty well, all things considered. I mean, we just had like really crazy stuff. Some people thought that was going to spike the prices. I don't know that I ever really did. I thought it would increase them but uh gold and silver are doing doing pretty good ryan thank you so much uh silver forever should i use erasers or torch on copper spots i don't know why anyone would use a torch it's pretty crazy you have to get a grip on the coin so say you're using a pliers or some kind of tong you're more likely to dent that coin holding on to it you know, unless your fingers can stand the heat of a torch, then you are with just, you know, those polymer erasers. So I've used, I bet if I looked at these buffaloes, I bet one of them has a copper spot somewhere. And that eraser is, that one has one, but I doubt it'll show up on camera. Uh, that eraser will take them off immediately. Now, if, if you don't go crazy with the eraser, and for the record, it's your coin, man. If if uh, <laughs> if you take an eraser to them and you damage them, uh, I will disavow all knowledge of ever saying that you can take an eraser to them. But uh, you know your mileage may vary, but buffaloes are a 24 karat coin you can see right above this guy's junk there's copper spot and uh i can't get with my broken back i can't get both hands in front of the camera and it'll be blurry anyway uh what i'm doing right now is using the magic eraser it's it's not a magic eraser don't don't use a magic eraser those things are abrasive as hell uh, I've just used the polymer eraser and wait for it. I feel like there's like a magic word I could say to get this thing to focus. It's gone. So it's possible that'll come back. And what it is, is the minting equipment, typically some kind of, steel, iron, something, iron shavings will get from the, uh, from the minting equipment. 
basically like like think like an iron sliver will get into the softer gold just barely tiny bit and that oxidizes turns into rust got a copper spot it's not actually copper it's just red comes off easy blowtorch will take it off too you can do that baking soda and tin foil thing uh you know if you want to use science Anyway, they, they, they come off easy. I've talked to plenty of dealers about it. None of them care about those spots. I care about them. I don't like them, especially if they're on a video. Uh, but uh, I found that a eraser takes them off right away. Congrats on the buffalo and maple, Bruce. It's got to feel good, especially today. Jeez. Uh, and Victor, yeah, again, to be clear, that's like... Uh, in the striking process, you know, you think of how many times that's used over and over. Little fragments of the, the metal get into the gold, stick around. A year later, it oxidizes, rusts, surface rust comes right off. That's what that is. Yeah, Grumpy, when a lot of people think that, like you see a copper spot and you're like, okay, that's that came through a real process because there's no faking that. So it's just a matter of whether you're, OCD takes over and you got to get rid of it. You know, I've seen lots of slabbed coins that'll go into the local coin shops that people get rid of because it's copper spot. I've bought a few of those, cracked them out of the slabs, got rid of the copper spot. Just got a cheap coin. Uh, someone, I feel like it was Zeph. I don't know if Zephiel still in here was asking about bars. And I meant to reply to that and didn't. So next time you see Zeph, tell him that I didn't forget about him. <laughs> I don't buy bars because my local coin shops don't like bars. If that wasn't the case. You know, maybe I'd be half coins, half bars. Uh, every time I've talked to a local coin shop about bars, they complain and they all say the same thing. They say, why would you buy bars? Uh, there have been a few times when I'm traveling for work that I'll stop in and they could care less. I'll buy a bar. Uh, when I'm in LA and I go to Chinatown, they're all about bars. They, they don't care as long as it's 24 K. So in a case like that, if I was, if it was really easy for me to get to those coin shops, there's one in Manhattan beach too, that, again, just does not care if it's a bar, uh, I would buy my bars because in, in a case like that, usually you can beat the spread, the buy to spell, geez, the buy to sell spread because you pay a lower premium on the front. Even though you get a lower premium on the back, there's a smaller delta. Uh, American Gold Eagle, I'll pay 6% premium. I'll sell it for 1% over. That's a 5% spread. Sometimes I can get 2% over. Sometimes it's going to cost me 7% premium though. A bar, I'll spend 3% over and I'll get 2% under spot. It's 5% spread still. Uh, that's if I sell to a local coin shop. Now, if I go out and I sell to somebody who's just getting into gold private sale, they don't want that bar because they don't have a way to verify it. But they look at the American Gold Eagle. They've seen it before. They know that it's a felony to counterfeit it. It's just an easier sale. So that's why I buy coins. Sergeant T, welcome. Uh, the reason you didn't know that I do live streams is because I'm not consistent. I've had a bad year. <laughs> Don, you're right about the Chinatown and jewelry, but they will buy bars happily. And I have uh, one shop in particular. If I take in a lunar or I take in, so these lunars, or if I take in the uh, Chinese myths and legends, it sounds obvious. China, Chinese is right in the name of the series, but they do it incredibly well. You know, there's a crazy collector market in Asia. And that's a big reason why these high relief coins below that are so hard to get a hold of. First of all, there's only 188 minted. It's ridiculous. I think that rooster had 288. But they go into Asia and they never come out again. So 
the uh, I take one of those into one of these shops in Chinatown. They do incredibly well. I take that same coin into my local shop uh, in, well, let's say if you're in DFW, they'll, they'll do wonderful because it's a big population. If you take them to Kansas City, they might not do well. So it all depends on where you live. That kind of the bars, my shops aren't fans of them. So uh, when you get into 100 gram bars and larger, I think it starts to make more sense. Because at that point, you know, you're know, you probably not as worried about having to sell them quickly to begin with. But also you save even more on premium at that size. Joseph, thank you very much. Uh, let's see, 20 different channels on silver is biased. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's not so much that everyone's saying the exact same thing. There aren't different perspectives on it. It just, it feels like when you get too many of one thing, it's a chorus. And then you start to kind of question what you're doing because so many people are saying it. And what I have found in certain cases, certainly not everybody, but in certain cases, uh, one person does a video that does well. People in the same circle see that that video did well and they do the same video. So it's an echo chamber that I, I kind of try to avoid. I follow a lot of the people in the community, but uh, sometimes it it gets old. All right, I'm going to flip back over to the questions. Uh, a few can I don't know how interesting this is to everybody. If you want cool playing cards, <laughs> let's go to Theory Eleven. They've got all kinds. My favorite though are Joker and Thief. These are Wayfarers. Sergeant T, thank you. Appreciate you joining. Um, this deck is something that uh, I have. I think I have. I bought a case of them. So they, they were selling them in 12s. <laughs> and I actually will play with these. But a lot of the decks that I have, I don't play with. I, I buy bees by the case. And those cases are 24. These just are like, if you're, you're doing something with, uh, you know, family or friends, they're like the special occasion cards and if you're a weirdo like me and you have a channel where you talk about gold they're a good backdrop they're just a cooler looking deck of cards than yeah, i've got bees right here but it's not i won't get them out everyone's seen bees or bicycles they're just more fun so uh blackinkbranded.com jokerandthief.com and theory11.com all of them have fantastic cards yeah and jay dre is pointing out the i used to play cards it's an understatement and it led me into collecting gold two ways and i'll use the word collecting because my story i get to tell it uh i had one night where uh i won a lot good to see a t t the silver stacker thank you have a good night good weekend and i bought some gold with it and through just through the years playing i i noticed two very specific occasions where people had coin covers i told one of them in a short uh they had one of these and another guy had a, a worn out maple and that just stuck with me. I mean, people were playing cards with a one ounce gold card cover. And it was just intriguing to the point where you kind of had to look into it. And it's a little bit like, you know, some of those people I mentioned in the Discord server, Jeff or Chris or Bill or, you know, no offense to the rest of you, <laughs> but some of them, they just, they hit your curiosity. Like, what is this person doing that allows them to have a one ounce gold coin? For a card cover and the more i looked into it the more i liked and that did kind of lead to me getting getting the bug getting the the gold bug uh good luck vinny yeah the throwing the one ounce gold coins in the pot be uh kind of a big deal 
we kind of had to quit because well, I, I still play at some of the bigger games elsewhere, but locally, when you do like the Thursday night card game, you you have a couple of nights where one of your friends gets in a little over their head and it just leaves you with a bad feeling. That started happening too much in in my primary circle. And I was I was playing too much. Then I had kids and then it just started to feel more and more uh, like I was not the responsible adult. <laughs> All right, what else do we have? Uh, the Ray story, Shadow Work. Uh, just between us here, his name was actually Jer. I switched it just because I felt funny putting that out there. Uh, another guy I played with for years was his name was Ray. Anyway, I had a Hold'em tourney. It was a one ounce gold coin buy in. Nice. 10 run and winner took all. It was a winner take all. Uh, usually, the yeah, the pot goes down to third place if it's a 10, 10 seat single table, two seat at least. That's crazy. Yeah, that's like an all or nothing. You need to be, you need to be going in early. You can't sit around. I had a tournament where it was a it was a charity tournament, but they split the winnings. Half went to the charity, half went to the winner, and there were uh, it was a field of eleven hundred and some people, and I won it, and uh, they. You know, so they gave me the half of the the winnings, and it was significant. Uh, <laughs> my my accountant at the time was actually playing, and so it was like he was telling me I was going to have to report it. And so it was. I mean, I didn't even think about it. I, I I gave it to the charity, of course. It was like this horrible thing. The family <sighs> they were in a fire. A re really bad deal. Anyway, of course, I was going to give this money that was mine for all of like two seconds, but somebody uh, came and threw in three gold coins at the time. And this was probably, Oh, 2014 ish. And so, so gold would have been what, like $1,100. And that, that was tough. I almost, I almost had to keep the gold, but uh, I gave that, gave that as well. So that was as close as I got to the, the gold coins. But I mean, it was 1,100 people, and you win that, you you're feeling pretty cool. Uh, I've won a couple tournaments, but that was far and away the largest field that I got first place in. Anyway, I digress. Uh, Zeph did leave before we talked about bars, didn't he? <laughs> anyway. This, this whole gold bug, gold fever, gold addiction, dragon fever thing. Uh, NPR had an article today, and they were talking about this explosion in retail purchasing and central bank purchasing. 2022 was a record year. It was, a, it was far and away the largest uh, gold purchased uh, in the decade. You know, so going back to 2020, 2012, and you you have to go back to like June of 2011 to hit uh, something comparable. But the fourth quarter is a record. You've never seen that before. More people bought Q4 than ever before. So uh, this article in NPR was about some girl, 20 year old college kid who went into a coin shop and bought a 10 ounce bar. And, you know, it, it, cool story. You know, she was, uh, I, I don't know how she heard about it. it. It seemed like at the end of the article, she made some mention of her of her pop, her dad, I assumed that was. Maybe it was her grandpa. Uh, but it's it's getting that crazy where you have, you know, you have people who you would never think would be into gold getting into it now. And I think that with the lull in cryptocurrency, you have, you know, people going out and maybe giving it some attention. I, I think it's going to, I don't think it's something that's going away with CBDCs. I don't think it's going away just because younger generation doesn't care about it. I think it's actually getting more attention than it, it has really since I can 
think of, you know, maybe in 2011, it was people were this excited about it, but I see it going up, not down. Uh, yeah, anyone on your way out, if I didn't see you in the, uh, on the way in, have a great weekend. I mentioned, I'm trying not to say hello to everybody coming in. I feel bad, but, uh, then I, I lose my train of thought and I sound like a big dummy. So <laughs> I absolutely appreciate everyone coming out. Good to see everyone. And if I, if I don't say hi, you know, apologies, hit me up on discord, hit me up wherever when, uh, I have a one track mind uh sc my wife and i have no kids home tonight got her on the gold live stream with me hey tell her hi uh i think in this room if we go by stats we're going to have like three percent ladies so i i don't i haven't looked to see how many people we've had in the chat all night i don't even know but i think earlier when i someone said 200 so you know Eight ladies, statistically speaking. <laughs> wish, wish we had more. Uh, Zero Silverhawk. If that's you, hello. Uh, glad to have you. I don't know why this has become such a, a guy thing. Uh, I've seen some really bad reasons why people think it is. I don't buy it at all. Someone said that uh, men are better savers. Man, that's... That's not my experience. Uh, and speaking of the ladies, just got a, hey, what's the Netflix password from my bride? So, you know, don't, don't mind me. I'm just going to look that up as we're talking. <laughs> oh, Peggy, another lady. Happy to have you. Appreciate that. Uh, it, it, it's weird that we don't, we don't have more. I think that I feel like my bride would be into it, except I'm into it. So it's like, yeah, we're covered. One of us is doing it. So good enough. Uh, my bride knows where to take this stuff. If I get hit by a bus for real, I had to tell her, was it three months in the, uh, <laughs> when I was sitting in the hospital uh, I had to give some pretty specific instructions. My my lawyer has all the instructions too. I have a younger brother who has a younger brother can get into all the crypto. Lawyer knows how to get it all the gold. So uh, it's not like my wife's not going to be able to find it or know what to do with it, but she might have to talk to a couple people. Donna, I'm going to assume we've got another lady in here. Fantastic. So statistically, we're about right. If there's a, if, if it's like 4% and we had 200 people, I mean, eight, eight women, it's crazy that that's the, that's the number, but I mean, let's see that grow. I know I'm going to have to go out and uh, I, I don't know how I'd change that. If you see some ladies on the street and they're like, I got to know about this gold stuff, send them over. All right, Peggy. I don't get it. We all like shiny things. I I think so. Like I think women are more typically detail oriented. They like what they like. I would think that it would stand out. So someone I don't. I think it was Chris said uh, that anytime he's shown a woman a gold coin, they like grab it and they hold it like like they're going to turn it into a necklace. I find that funny. I don't think that that's probably the typical response of all women, but I think he probably, he might, he might live with some, some fancy women. Melissa, here we go. Good to see you. I mean, maybe, maybe my stats are wrong. I think we have to hit eight before my, my stats are proven wrong. It's coined down on the bottom of the table near the pens. Let me see. I have to look at the stream. Yeah, okay, so that is a Athenian owl, tetradrachm, 17 grams of silver, minted, uh, struck about 250 BC in Greece. Super cool coin. Uh, I think of like Clash of the Titans 
the mechanical owl, Athena's mechanical owl. So you've got the owl on the one side, which was the symbol because it was messenger of Athena. You've got Athena herself on the obverse. Super cool. Uh, I was talking to Sal, Salivate Metals, and he had one just randomly. He had gotten one, and I grabbed mine out. I don't see Sal in here. Don't tell Sal, but I'm pretty sure Sal's is fake. <laughs> Oh, I mean, and he, he had a video about it and you could see it. I'm like, yep, fake. Uh, I could be so wrong, but uh, I feel like I'm right. EE, -E, thank you so much. Uh, what do we got, Ryan? So I, I feel like you're saying what I say a lot. Found gold to be a way I can save through spending. Yeah, there's this thing called retail therapy. And you look at it like retail therapy or you just look at like endorphin release. If you buy something you really want, you get a hit. You get an endorphin hit. It makes you feel good. So uh, people will stress spend. They'll go buy something when they're feeling like hell, probably feeling bad because of money. And then they'll go make it worse by spending. That's retail therapy. So. The idea with gold is you get it, you get that same endorphin hit buying gold. Well, you're not actually losing your you're losing your money, you're potentially losing some premium. So, worst case scenario, you're you're not spending it on on these stupid pocket knives. You're you're spending it on on gold that you can get most of your money back on. So, I mean it's good in that regard. And I wait a minute. Yeah. So it, it I think that it's just smart because you can you can buy the gold. And uh, it, it, I mean, you, everybody knows anyone who's been doing it for any period of time, it kind of like sucks you in, draws you in. And that's like, all you want to do is shop for another gold coin. When you buy that gold coin, you didn't actually spend the money. The thing though, with that endorphin, if we get just science-y for a minute, the endorphin hit is when you buy it. So if you buy it online, the minute that you hit buy, you get that punch, you get your endorphin, and then it like, instantly drains so then you've got like the week if you do an e-check two weeks before it gets there so what i found myself doing in 2020 was i would buy a quarter ounce gold coin i'd get that hit and then before it would get to me i would buy a second i did that twice before i realized that, that that's about the dumbest thing you can do because had i bought a half ounce and waited i would have spent less on premium so I've tried to try to figure that out over time. That's why I've kind of moved to the one ounce. Uh, you know, A, I'm spending more money on a monthly basis on gold, but B, I'm just trying to look for that easier premium. I would still go down a quarter ounce, though. I, I know a lot of people, like, I'll put out a video and I'll say, hey, I think it's a good idea because it keeps you, keeps you in the buying habit, keeps you thinking about gold if you buy every month. And there'll always be someone telling me, well, actually, you're stupid because you're wasting all this money on premium. Just wait four months by the one ounce coin. I'm not patient enough to do that. So anyone who's buying a quarter ounce a month rather than buying one out, you know, one ounce every four months, I totally get it. I'm certainly not judging that. Uh, okay. I see platinum in here. That comes up a lot. I need to, I need to cough again. Hold. So platinum, when, when I got married, we, we both had platinum rings. My wife still has them. I lost mine like a dummy. Uh, I think that platinum is like a bougie metal. And I get why people would want it. And I get the idea that it has an industrial use. And because of that, it could pass by gold. When we got married, platinum was more expensive than gold, considerably more. And now it's what half as much. So if you look at it from that perspective, and earlier when I said people will buy silver because the historically high GSR, not historically high, but the high GSR, they'll think it's a better time to buy silver and I'll come back around, I'll trade it in for gold. I don't think that way. I don't see that as a good strategy. So if you're buying platinum because you want to turn it into gold, I would say that you're potentially going to lose more at the local coin shop than it's worth. 
I would say that if you're stacking platinum because as a metal, it's going to go up. Yeah, that makes sense. But um, not as many people think of platinum as a monetary metal. So Sabat, thank you for coming out. I I'm sure it's like four in the morning in, in the Netherlands where you live. So glad you stopped by. Have a good weekend, my man. Uh, the platinum is going to, you know, I, I think it'll go up. I think you'll do well in it. You'll find, though, that local coin shops aren't going to buy back those coins for what you can buy them for on JM Bullion, on AppMix, and wherever. So you're going to have sunk costs. You're going to have acquisition costs that you're not going to get back. So it might do really well. But I don't personally buy it, and I don't recommend buying it. I, I feel like it, just like with anything, if you love silver, buy silver. If you love platinum, get after it. But uh, if you don't know, if you're on the fence, there's no need. Just you know, grab gold. It's it's proven. Bottom left coin on the thumbnail. Liberty. Oh yeah. Where are those coins? I feel like I feel like I gotta go back here for one moment. Hold on. All right, dramatic pause. Is the uh, coin in the thumbnail, I assume, is the 2019 Liberty? Fair assumption. To me, this is one of the coolest Bang the tripod. One of the cooler coins the Mint has put out. Let's see, 2010. Now there wasn't a 2010 Liberty. Maybe I'm missing the chat. Uh, these coins are fantastic. It's one of the only things the Mint does that I would have zero complaints about. This coin, you can still get it at a decent price. Uh, uh, these, when I got this, this was one of, this might've been my first Liberty. Uh, I saw this and I was like, man, I could, if price was no object. I would only buy that and nothing but that. It's, it's pretty fantastic. Uh, Sergeant T, a lot of people come in that way. Silver uh, as a, as a prep. You don't even have to call yourself a prepper. You can just say, you know, my emergency fund is is, a, is an important thing, uh, and you know, silver fits in because it's a it's a great increment. And I'm trying to text my son, and I'm typing silver when I mean get this get this dog. Uh, I mean, I, I get why you would have silver. It's it's a lot easier to use. But when you look at it like an investment or you look at it like something that's going to hit the moon, to me, that's the wrong approach. Yeah. This is what happens when you have multiple dogs and not enough, not enough children. This is why in the, in the 60s, families had like 12 kids. They had to have them to let out their dogs. Uh, okay, so yeah, I mean, silver, if you hear me talking about silver, like I always feel like I'm coming off negative. I'm super neutral on silver. And because so many people are so positive on silver, just me being neutral on it sounds sounds negative. I, I don't have anything against <laughs> silver. I mean, I started with silver. I still have some silver. I like silver. Uh, I prefer gold, obviously, but I, I get it. I just don't think at this point in my life that I'm going to need silver as backup beyond, you know, having a little bit. So we're with gold, you know, I could do something with that. I could potentially put that into land, put that into a property deal. If I do get hit by that bus, I mean, my family has something to take care of them for a little while. Family's going to be fine. But the point with gold to me is like over time, I'll have something that's 
significant and not for smaller use. It's it's for like big emergency serious use. Silver would be like the get out of Dodge kind of thing. And so, uh, you know, I get it. I like it, but they're different things. The, the kid to dog ratio right now is like one to four. It's not enough. <laughs> okay, let's see. Uh, yeah, I, in trading the, the dog to kid ratio, I've tried to get my wife on board with that. She's not quite there yet. Think for yourself. Good to see you, cowboy. It's been a while. I, I like that you came in right as I was talking about silver. Gold chick, good to see you. Uh, the sheer weight of silver, two grand in silver feels cooler. I mean, I sold down a monster box and it is about 35 pounds ish. You know, and so I'm a grown up. I can, I can walk with 35 pounds, <laughs> but uh, it just, it, it just started to feel silly because that was fine. I put it in a monster box. It's, you know, it's square, no big deal. Throw it in a, in a safe somewhere. When you start adding random stuff to it, random port bars, rounds, different sovereign coins, bunk silver, it gets out of control fast. So if you can like, you know, 10 ounces of of gold to 800 ounces of silver. I, I don't know. I mean, you're talking about 45 pounds of loose silver. It's not my, my deal. Like I, I like silver up to a point and then it's just feels like it's all over the place. So the significance is I get it. I mean, it's, it's cool that you've got to get a wheelbarrow out to move your silver. It makes you, if, if you feel good by bulk, yep. Silver is your, your game, but there's a point where it doesn't scale. Metal bomb saying I'm normally a two X. I don't know how you do the two X on my voice. I change speeds too often. Gold chick gets it. Silver's too heavy to run with. What if, what if the skinwalkers come after you? I mean, you got to leave that and go. Can't carry that around. It doesn't fit in the go bag. All right. Uh, sorry. I've got one of these dogs is super smart. There's no door that can prevent her from coming in. And she has just, just come in. Lead and brass don't run. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I had to place in the mountains, metal roof, you know, like you're like, okay, so what's defensible? I could hang out there. I wouldn't have to run. And then you get a house in the city. And I mean, your, your front door has side lights. You know, you got, you got windows by your front door. You got windows all around the master bedroom. I mean, at some point <laughs> you're not going to do well. Uh, let's see who's buying in the dip. I just bought, uh, I think I said, did I say that earlier? I bought an American Gold Eagle earlier. The premium was probably stupid, but I really feel like if it if the gold, if the price is under two thousand dollars, I'm I'm happy. I want to find the best deal that I can find because it's a little like betting on the horses. You you feel good if you save 30 bucks overall, though it's it's not a huge, huge thing. If I can uh catch a dip like today, $55 drop in one day, you know, that's, that's enough to get me, to get me excited. I wasn't planning on buying. Uh, I did. If gold goes down further, it has to go a lot further before I buy again. If gold shoots up, I'll just hold out for a little while. It lasts a little longer because this wasn't a planned buy. Yeah, that Holland safe, uh, that'll be a good one. So I have, so we're, we're talking OPSEC here. I shouldn't, I shouldn't say anything about what I have, but uh, 
Sabat just messaged me. Sabat does not live in the Netherlands. Uh, I have safes that are that you'll never find. Probably, it would be hard to find. And they are TL rated. You'd have a hell of a time because you're only seeing the face of them. You'd have a hell of a time getting them open. And then I have the Holland safe that I showed because the place that I just mentioned in the, in the mountains, I sold. And so that was one of the things I took out. And that safe is like, to me, the perfect Goldilocks for, you know, you don't have the giant safe. You can't support a thousand dollars on your wood floors, thousand dollars. I say dollars, a thousand pounds on your wood floors. It, Holland is like the sweet spot. It, it, be pretty difficult to get into it. Now, if I'm in the house, you always have to figure it like there are ways for someone to get you to open a safe, of course, especially if you have kids or a wife or a husband. Sorry to the ladies. Uh, there are ways to get somebody to force somebody to open a safe. That aside, it, so if I'm there alone, you know, you, you're you have to go through an angry human before you get to the safe. If I'm not there, uh, my security systems, my cameras, all of that stuff is, you know, you're working against the clock because they're all going off and, the, and the, the man is on the way. Cops are coming. So a Holland safe is kind of a good, it's not TL rated, but you have a hell of a time getting into it. So I like that. You'll like that safe, I'm sure. And uh, good luck moving it because they're heavy as hell. We got another silver, 100 ounce silver Germania bar. Uh, the, the thing with bars is once I buy a bar, I'm like stuck on that complete, like I want more of that bar. I don't want to have three different kinds. If it's like a Sunshine Mint bar and an RCM bar, they're the exact same size. They fit in those capsules. I can do that. But I can't get like the PAMP poured bars, the Germania Mint bars and then rcm and it just drives me nuts that's where that whole bulky silver thing starts to get me the two is one uh where that came from is so it's two is one one is none and basic terms it means have a backup plan if your work requires that you have a hammer you gotta have two hammers because if you break that hammer you're out of work uh, Navy SEALs kind of took that further. And the two is one, one is none is a Navy thing. Uh, but the it, it the idea, I don't know if it was exactly two is one, one is none, if it came before, because I heard that growing up. So if it's Navy, it's from, it's from old school Navy. You know, I had, uh, I had family that said that to me all the time. And it, You'll, you'll hear it from ranchers a lot. You'll hear it from farmers a lot. People who, you know, they'll lose a day of work if, if something goes wrong. So that's what it is. It's just a planning mantra. Yeah, I mean, the preppers have really kind of taken, latched onto it. I mean, it means means even more in that regard because you're, you know, you're buying something that you potentially can't replace. The idea of prepping is that, you know, if you get grid down and you can't go to the store to buy something, you better have that second second whatever uh or you're just out of luck i mean we read the books zombies come emp comes whatever it is you better have that replacement part for your power wagon or you're out of luck <laughs> redundancy is a good thing so my my plan on the redundancy is like i'll have a cash savings in case something goes wrong and then i'll have the uh the gold behind that where uh, things got went really wrong and I couldn't earn. I see an ounce of gold as a way to subsidize a month of expenses. So I look at every one of those as like, so if I want to have two years, because it might take two years to get back on my feet, uh, I can use, oh, what happened to my camera? Oh, man. Give me a moment. I'll switch the battery and I'll keep talking. It's 
So if I have two, or if I have an ounce of gold, uh, that's going to subsidize my monthly expenses. Now, I can't live on $2,000 a month maybe with my whole family, but uh, it's at least a start. So, all right, I'm sure that'll work, right? If not, it's going to be a very abrupt stop to the night. Yeah, see, were we just talking about redundancy? Just talking about two is one, one is none. I do have two batteries, but I don't know. This thing, it just happened to be right exactly at the two hour mark. It might have been fate saying, shut this thing down at two hours. This is where having those interns would have been a good idea. Would have been a really good idea. Be like, we're going to give this a couple moments of awkward. Hot fix time, and if it doesn't work, we are going to punt. Boy, that's frustrating. The camera is working. We can hear it beeping. This is where I turn it back on, and it's like headshot, just me and my dog drinking some bourbon. Did that not work? Ah, EMP for sure. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. We all know, is it Murphy's Law? That's, no, Murphy's Law says if something can break, it will. Uh, there is another law that says the moment that I shut off a live stream, it will, it will turn back on. Tell you what, it's two hours, my friends. And this camera, I think, called it a lot earlier than I was expecting, but appreciate everyone coming out. Uh, let's call it a night, get back to the weekends, be good. And uh, if anyone hasn't checked out that Discord server you're interested, I'm gonna drop it in the comment immediately after this, uh, after this live stream, hit us up there. And it's primarily text, but we have some options there to do some some video stuff as well. We will be. So uh, appreciate you all. Thank you. Sorry for the weird ending. Have a good weekend.